YouTube studio setup videos are usually where you start when you want to build out your studio or figure out some specific pieces that you want to add to your to your YouTube studio. And although the camera is the most important piece in the set, I'm going to start talking about audio. I'm using two Neewer pencil stick condenser microphones. When I'm shooting, I use both mics. I have one underslung right here in front of me that is attached to a boom pole that I got from Guitar Center in like 2012. But I will link something down similar in the description with everything else that I do mention in this video. I have the other one on top of the camera attached to the XLR mic holder that is on top of the camera that comes with the camera, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. These mics are both XLR mics. I think I mentioned that. And I set them up this way to make sure I have backup audio. This room is untreated. Audio is very important. So I always try to have a way to capture backup audio in the case that I need it. Right now, I'm going to cycle through both microphones. Right now, I'm talking through the one that is boom right here in front of me. This is how this one sounds. No audio processing at all whatsoever. Now you're listening to the one that is on top of the camera. This is how it sounds in the space. No audio processing at all whatsoever. Although the microphone on top of the camera is further away, the audio is still good enough to use and mix in with this mic that I have closer to me in the case that I do need it. These mics are under 100 for the entire set. They come with two mics, interchangeable mic caps, two mic holders, and that is pretty much it. XLR cables are not included. You'd have to get those on your own. But the three mic capsules that come with the mics, so they both comes with their own set. It is a cardioid, hypercardioid, and omnidirectional capsule that can be detached and attached to the microphone interchangeably. And what all of that means is that you have the option to choose the pickup pattern of the microphone to be narrow or wide. I use hypercardioid because of the reverb in this space. And this means that the pickup pattern is much more directional and rejects the more of the room sound so you can pick up my voice much clearly. I'm working on a full review of these mics plus a video on how to set up the audio and camera to get the audio to sound the way that I do. And then probably another video on how I edit audio using these microphones and a DaVinci Resolve. If you're interested in that, definitely hit the subscribe button. But if you are wanting to use something similar to these XLR input mics, in a space that's like this, then I would highly recommend looking into picking up an XLR adapter that works with your camera system if the camera doesn't take XLR mics. These mics are great. I'd highly recommend. The lighting I'm using in this space are two Godox SO60Ws, one Nira 660 light panel, some different light sticks that are from Ambitful, and newer and hue light bulbs that I have in some lamps as practicals. The main Godox I use as a key light has a light dome and a grid attached to it to make the light more directional. It sits on a cheap Amazon brand light stand that I've had for about three years. This light usually sits in front of me at an angle for dramatic lighting. The other Godox light has a smaller light dome on it. It shoots up at the ceiling most of the time, sits back in that corner over there. I have it on a tension rod and the reason why I have it shooting up at the ceiling is so that it bounces light down and make the light softer that shines off into the room to light up the space basically. The Nero light panel that I use, I mostly only use it for dramatic effect. That helps me light up the space when I have it in the other setup where the walls are black and I just need more space to light up the blacker walls because it just takes a lot to light up a dark space, which is why I'm shooting in this angle. I'm just testing it out to see if it's an angle that I want to continue to use. The wand lights I use are usually used to light up the darker corners in the darker direction that I usually shoot in with the darker, moodier background. I need those lights in those corners because other than that, it'll just be pitch black. So I make sure I have those lights on to illuminate that back space. And it's also, I guess, stylistic. And then I use the hue light bulbs just to add a little more color to the space. Now the camera. The camera I'm using is the Sony FX3 with the XLR top handle. 
the Nebra pencil mics run through the XLR top handle. I use the top handle because I believe most Sony cameras can only produce 16-bit quality when it comes to audio, but with the XLR handle, you can get up to 24-bit audio quality with the right camera. The better the audio quality, the better the video, in my opinion. The FX3 is a simple studio camera. It is pretty simple to use. I got it because of its ease of use and because I was already using a Sony camera for my professional work. And in the case I needed a second body to create in a space, I wanted a camera from the same brand. The camera does cost a fortune and you can get similar or better quality with cheaper cameras. Now I have it fully rigged out with an external battery, a couple of side grips and an external monitor and the XLR mics that I mentioned earlier, the Neva pencil mics. I typically have the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8 on the camera for talking heads, but when I'm shooting B-roll, I use the 90 millimeter F2.8. I like the 20 millimeter because of its 1.8 aperture. It is wide enough to use in this space and still get decent background separation. But I would love to get my hands on the Viotrox 16 millimeter F1.8 to see how it looks in this space. I use the 90 millimeter because of its macro capabilities and the ability to get close to the subject for detailed shots. And I've recently been using the Nikon 50 millimeter F1.8. It's an older vintage style lens, which I adapted to the Sony FX3. This lens is great. I love it the way it looks and I would definitely be using it in more videos. And this past weekend, I found this APS-C 50 millimeter at, at in the U section at a local camera store. I wanted this one because it has stabilization, whereas the Nikon 50 millimeter does not have lens stabilization as this one does, but the Nikon has a little more character than this Sony 50 millimeter. And yes, the FX3 is a full frame camera, but with active stabilization, crop plus clear image zoom, you have little to no vignette when using this lens. And I shot 90% of the b-roll for this video right here with this APS-C 50 millimeter on the full frame Sony FX3. This is my studio setup. It is small, pretty simple, but it is effective. And what are you using or are you looking to get for your setup? Let us know down in the comments below. Then check out this video while staying awesome. Stay awesome.